chapter nine, we're gonna continue with experimental um, sampling. Last time, chapter eight, we talk about sampling methods, right? We talk about the good way of sampling, the bad way of sampling. So the good way will be what? Yeah, simple random sample, right? That's the simplest one. That's why it's simple. And then there's the more complicated one, which is stratify. Um, what is the bad way? A volunteer and convenient, right? Those, those are bad. Um, and then within those two bad, there's there are three bias right, bias cases, which I'll leave that to you. Now, number so that is what we did is observational sampling. We don't do anything. We just kind of observe and draw conclusion. On chapter nine is different. Chapter nine, we're gonna talk about experiments. We're gonna use situation, um, and then they may assign treatment, and then they draw conclusion. So that's the difference between chapter eight and chapter nine. So right there, when it comes to conducting the studies, there are two types. Either you observe, just watch, and then draw conclusion, or you um you do experimental. You see, uh, you assign treatment to your subject and see what the outcome. Yes. Oh, okay. Let me know. Email me. I'll delete that question. Okay. Not supposed to do that. Yes. Uh, I'll delete that. <clears throat> All right. So, observational study. my notes. The researchers simply observe and measure the participants, right? It's about opinion, behavior, or outcome. And do not assign any treatment or condition to the subject. as we see in chapter eight, right? So usually uh, it's similar to sampling survey. It's similar to sampling survey. So it, it's, they try to, um, now for the case of observational study, um, it's not as good as the experimental studies. And I'll tell you why later. For experiments, for experiment, the researcher manipulates something or measure the effect of manipulation on some outcome of interest. We call that the response. So they manipulate something, measure effect the manipulation to some outcome. And the outcome sometimes we call that response. Often participants are randomly assigned to a various condition or treatments. Um, this they do this a lot in medical studies. You know how COVID, COVID vaccination, right? They have a control group of people who take the trial of COVID vaccine. So that's an experimental uh, research. Or they do this in a lot of psychology study as well. And why do we do this? Um, this kind of study um, is often reduced bias. It tends to reduce bias as opposed to observationals. Remember the three types of bias we saw in observationals that might occur. They use this in medical experiments or um, psychology. Psychology. <clears throat> when you conduct a experiment, uh, when you conduct either observational study or experimental study, um, there are two variables that we interesting. The first one is called explanatory variables. Things your input. It's kind of like x and y in math, right? x is your input. So explanatory variable is your input. Sometimes they call this 
um, let me write out another term for explanatory variable. We call this input or factors. We call these sometimes we call that factors. Well, um, or sometimes they call that treatment. And then they measure the outcome variable, which is we call that response variable or variables of interest. <clears throat> now, confounding variables, sometimes we call this lurking variable. They weren't explanatory in the studies, um, the study research. However, they just kind of creep up unexpectedly. That's why we call that lurking. They're just kind of lurking about. Um, it's a variable that is not explanatory variable. However, it affects the outcome, it affects the response. So in a way they are bad, right? We don't want them there, but somehow they just kind of creep up on the data set. <clears throat> and I'll give you the example um, of that. So looking variable is usually bad. I'm not saying 100%. Usually really what that's what we don't want. <clears throat> They weren't, um, they aren't explanatory variable, but they influence, influence, they change the outcome. <coughs> It happens a lot. Um, it's often the case, usually it happens um, more often with the observational study. Often the case of observational study. It's difficult to control your variables when you just observe, right? you just do nothing. <clears throat> And I will give you one example about confounding variable later. But um, let's take a look at this example. Student health study. A researcher at University of Michigan um, believed that the number of times students visit the student health center is strongly correlated with the student's type of diet and their amount of weekly exercise. The researcher selected a simple, uh, simple random sample of 100 students from a total of 3,568 students that have visited um, the SHC last month, first recorded the number of visits made to the health center. And then he looked up their record and classify each student um, um, according to their type of diet, either home cook or fast food, um, and the amount of exercise, the none, twice a week, or every day. In this study, is this the observational study or randomized experiment? Is there any tr aside treatment? Do you see any aside treatment? No, right? He just observed, right? He just see people who come into the um, health center, uh, or in this case, student. So it's, ex it's definitely an observational study since there's no treatment. It's not like he gave them pill or anything, right? Uh, which one is explanatory variable and which one is response variables? Remember, explanatory variable is the input, right? And then they use that to measure the outcome. So what he did was he looked up their record of their food type and the amount of exercise weekly. And then he draw a conclusion, a conclusion about how often the student come visit the health center, right? So your explanatory, which is your input, it should be the type of diet. Yeah. Uh, type of diet and the amount of exercise and then he measure the response response variables which is the number of visits which is makes sense right if a student who eat healthy um, exercise regularly 
you should visit the health center less often in, in, on average, as opposed to somebody uh, often eats fast food and don't exercise. Any question on that, you, uh, on that problem? Oh, you guys studying for this too. <laughs> Uh, let me give another note. Usually, explanatory variable. Um, it could be it could be categorical. Either categorical or quantitative. Quantitative. However, response variables are usually quantitative. Why quantitative? So you can do your final book summary, right? You can graph it, see what happened. You can do your mathematical manipulation. Now this one's you guys. You can try this one. And I'll ask you what are the response variables and what's, which one is response, um, explanatory and response variables. Uh, and let me read just a part of it. A recent study showed that among those over 25, as education level increased from less than high school to high school grad to some college and college grad, the rate of mo motor vehicle crash deaths decreased. So more, more education, le uh, less death rate, basically. <laughs> Which one is the explanatory variable? Which one do you think? Level education, right? Level education. So they use that to measure the rate of um, vehicle death rate. So that's it. <clears throat> Explanatory will be, will be education level. And then respond variable will be rate motor vehicle cross death. Those with less education tend to drive cars that are older, have poor cross test rating, and have fewer safety features such, such as um, side airbags. All the variables, age of car, crash test rating, and presence of safety features, explanatory variables, response variables, or looking variables, AKA confounding variable. So we established that your explanatory variable is level of education, right? Now I see more variable creep up. These right here. Are they your explanatory variable in the beginning of your study? No, right? No, they call they are looking variable. So um <clears throat> because they weren't they weren't explanatory variable. because they were the explanatory variable that variables that we start with. <clears throat> now, because of that, are we saying that people would ha have, have um, higher better education drive better? Can we conclude like that?
affect the outcome, which is your response <laughs> variable, right? They they are they were an explanatory variable, but they affect the outcome. Now, um, according to our study, it seemed like people who have more schooling, um, it looks like they drive better. Is it true? Is it true? So the more the more education you have, you you're a better driver. No, right? No, of course not. It's not. It seemed like there are correlation. It seemed like there is a a, a good a, a correlation between level of education and and the rate of death, but it absolutely not a causation, right? Not a causation. Like I said, um, the the reason people who who usually people who don't finish school they they have poor job, right? Have poor pay. They can't afford better car. Um, have less feature of safety. So when they get into a crash, they tend to the chance they, the chance of being um, have fatal accident is higher, right? So so no, absolutely, because you go to more schooling does not mean that you drive better. So now there. So what we say we're gonna say there is a correlation between. level of education and crash death rate but it's not a causation My pen is out of battery. Not a causation. So, um, so that's what you see on your exam, right? I give you a scenarios and I ask you what is explanatory variable, response variables, or left variables. Okay. Here's some terminology just to get you uh, familiar with the um, problem. Uh, individual in the study, we call that subject, especially people. Explanatory variables in experiment are often called factors. We talk about this. A treatment is any specific experimental condition applied to the subjects. It usually happen in the medical studies. If an experiment has more than one factor, a treatment is a com combination of specific value of each factors, which um, don't worry about that. It's, um, it's, we're not gonna get too deep to that. So just remember treatment is, is some kind of experimental condition that assigned to um, the subjects. I think this is our last problem. Now we're gonna start an iPod for next time. No, we will we'll, no. we'll try to finish an iPod four today and we we'll start an iPod seven next. And then we have a quiz. <clears throat> All right, some more examples. External clue studies. A study exam how external clues influence students' performance. Undergrad students were randomly assigned to one of four different forms for their midterm exam. Form one was print on blue paper and contained difficult question. While form two was also print on the blue paper 
but contains simple questions. Form three was print on red paper with difficult questions. And form four was printed on red paper with simple questions. The researcher was interested in the impact that color and type of question had on exam score out of 100 points. Um, do you think this is observational study or um, a randomized experiment? Well, the only question you ask yourself, is there is any treatment being assigned to the subject? Yeah, there's the assigned different, um, different color of papers, right? So there's treatment, right? There's treatment. And that psycho psychologically affect your um, men mental thinking. So it definitely ran in my experiment. Anybody see that? Anybody see that? Um, because he assigned treatment, right? Which is in different colors, here, different uh, color papers here. Who are the subjects in these studies? Hmm? Who are the subjects in this study? Undergrad students, right? So undergrad students subject. Undergrad students. Complete the following statements by circling the appropriate answer. Um, the color of fact, uh, the color of paper is A N. Which variable? Yeah, that's your explanatory variable, right? So either you can answer factor or explanatory. The exam score is He assigned different color with different level of difficulty of question to measure, which is, what is the response here? How well the student do, right? The score, right? So, oh, I'm sorry, I circled um, the wrong one. Okay, so uh, let me recap. So far, I show you what is observational study and experimental study. Also, uh, be, able, be able to recognize the explanatory variables versus response variable versus looking variables. Right. 9.4, that'll be our last section, and then we're going to have a quiz. Maybe I'll, I'll give you five minutes to ask me a question before we have a quiz. Uh, like I said, this quiz, I don't want to scare you, but it's slightly harder than last quiz. And again, you are allowed to drop two quizzes. So. A randomized comparative experiment involve the comparison at least two treatments, or sometimes we call that methods, say treatment A and treatment B. A group of participants or subjects is randomized to receive either treatment A or treatment B. So basically what they have is they have two treatments and you are my subject. So I randomly assign you either treatment A or treatment B, right? So that's what um, randomized comparative experiments. And then I wanna see the result between the two treatments. Uh, I think I have an example, but I forgot what it is. Um, there's, for example, for, let me give you an example of randomized comparative experiments. Um, say diabetes pills. There are two types of diabetes pills, two different companies, and they want to know which one is more effective have less side uh, and more effective and at the same time have less side effect, right? Um, say I have 100 people, 100 would be small, 100 people who are gonna be randomly assigned to either um, the drug that produced by company A and, um, and randomly assign 100 to um, the drug that produced by company B. And then I compare how the outcomes. Okay. So that's one of the example of Comparative experiments.
in these experiments, you don't have control group. Can I tell you what the control group is? The control group is generally a baseline group that receive no treatment or they, is, they receive dummies, right? dummy pills. To access the treatment effectiveness, the experimenter compared the result in the treatment group to the result in the control group. All right, um, here's the example, ginger pills. In the study of cold symptoms, every one of the 50 study sub subjects where a cold was found to have improved two weeks after taking ginger pills. The authors conclude that the ginger pills cure the cold. What is the major flaw in this study? So they have a bunch of people who, um, so it's oh, well, 50 people here who are taking the ginger pills and after two weeks, they all get better. And he concluded that the ginger peel works, it's cure the colds. What is, what is the flaw? Yeah, <laughs> who are you comparing it with, right? <laughs> of course, over time, your body just fired off, right? Um, so he need a, com a, a control group for these studies, right? To um, compare with. So the major flaw would be, there was no control group to compare with. Maybe cure the cold, maybe not. We don't know without the control group. <clears throat> Usually for healthy people, you get a cold, you just kind of, without treatment, you get better after a week or so. Placebo control group study. Have you heard of the word placebo? Yeah, especially people who study psychology. Placebo is just the word of saying dubbies, right? Um, a study that compared the response of the experimental treatment with a placebo are called the placebo control study, meaning they assign dummies pills to you. <laughs> it's a way of saying dummies. Have you heard of people who ask, um, you know, so some people come to a doctor's office um, when they have a cold and they kind of expect the doctor to give them something. You know, there's nothing. There's no cure for cold, right? It just, just way, just way to run a course. Uh, but they feel better when the doctor gives them something. Right? That's called placebo effect. Right? Even though maybe the doctor just assigned them some kind of vitamin or some sugar pills. Active control study. Oh, this is a good one. Um, an act active control study is a treatment that has already been shown to be an um, effic efficacious product by several previous investigations and is also recognized by medical community. Study that compare the response of experimental treatment with an active control are called active control studies. I'm trying to look up an example. Um, but this one, um, ooh, um, COVID vaccination. Well, that would be active control study. Um, is is according to the data, it seems like people who take the COVID vaccination have lesser lesser side effect. Right, when you get sick, of course, it's not gonna cure you. You may get caught the virus, but then um, you don't feel as as worse is people who did not have the vaccination, right? So, the, so that's been proven to be effective, the COVID vaccine. So that's called active control studies, right? They keep study on the making, try to make better COVID vaccine with a different, different strain. Right? So that's the active control study. Double-blind experiment. 
neither the subject nor the people who interact with them know which treatment each subject is receiving. So, um, so say if you are my subjects, um, I'm gonna assign you to. I'm gonna assign you to treatment A and treatment B, but I'm not gonna look at which room you go into. So I don't know which room, which treatment you you going to receive. Uh, neither do you. So maybe somebody, of course, somebody gotta know, but just not me or, or nor you, right? So people, subject and the people who actually interact with them don't know which treatment. So, so that's reduced bias. Um, so that's called double blind experiment. Uh, nobody know which room you're going to, which treatment you're going to receive. And we talk about the placebo effect that Dr. Office visit thing. All right, last slide, and then um, um, we're gonna take five minutes question or 10 minutes question, and then we have a quiz. 9% of control group that received a fake treatment on a trial of new arthritis medication said they had decreased pain. What kind of study you see here? Placebo, placebo. They retreat dummies, right? Fake treatment. Uh, well, they don't know that. Um, but they say, oh, I feel better. Um, it's called placebo effect, right? So placebo control or placebo effects. The answer would be placebo effect. Um, now, what's different between placebo control and placebo effect? Placebo effect is more like a mental thinking, right? Where placebo control means I have a, a group who taking dummy pills and the group who taking the real pills. Right? So so this is this is the study designs. This is not. This is like more like psychological mental thinking. <clears throat> All right. Yeah then do you have any last minute question on the, the quiz too? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, you know what? I gotta take a look at the exam. I have the exam. Um, I have a bunch of questions I want to ask you. I just haven't picked them yet. So, so give me one one sense, second, and I'll I'll let you know. No. Assume all my questions. No. Chapter nine is not gonna be on your exam one. So your exam one will be chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and chapter eight. Anything else? Yes. Um, I can borrow you, let you borrow on exam one, but I recommend you get new one. Oh, oh, okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, I have. You can borrow. Uh, I would recommend scratching paper because I don't want you to flip back and forth. Anything else? All right, let me talk about exam one. Let me tell you um, just some, some hints because from last semester, people making silly mistakes and I don't, I, it's just, just, you know, it's not worth it. Um, for exam one, I need you to be, be able to compare the bar graphs and the histogram. What's the difference between bar graphs and histogram? Beside that. Yes, beside that. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, there's space between um, bars in bar graph, right? But there's no space in histogram. So even though the two graphs look very similar, you're looking for the space, right? So it could be very deceiving. Uh, 
uh, there will be a question where I give you a histogram and ask you um, about the, you know, find the center. Remember what the center is histogram? The highest peak, right? So approximate those value around there. Um, I would ask you about Yeah, just just um, I'll ask you about some some question. I can't tell you all. <clears throat> yes, yes. Not not like I'm not changing just number. You know, sometimes I twist it a little bit, but uh, like eighty percent, eighty five percent will be very similar. Similar, similar. <laughs> be able to um, give the interpretation of standard deviation correctly. Be able to give the interpretation of standard deviation correctly. On average. Comma, yeah, and all that. I show you how to do that on one of the slides, right? Just follow the slides. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm debating between um, Leaf and box plot. I can't give you both, it's too long. Um, so, so know your leaf thing and know your box plot, how to draw a box plot and how, how to draw a leaf, stem, stem leaf. <laughs> Be able to describe the data. Remember socks, shape, outlier, center, Spread right socks. You're gonna give me all four. Include, huh? um, describe the data. Socks. Is in the oh, slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with context. Don't just give me like oh the center is and don't don't give me your bullet point <laughs> with with context. Right? With context. Um, you're gonna have one of those. You know. Um, normal curve thing like chapter three that we did. The, um, and then um, and then for chapter eight, there will be um, multiple choice. So you can have a combination between multiple choice and written exams, okay? Um, your exam should not be any harder than whatever I show you on the lecture notes. Okay, so study lecture notes be able to understand what I'm, what the lecture note is. And it should be, you should be fine. All right, let's take, um, let's take a quiz. You can um, turn around like you did last time.